On today's show, Donovan Mitchell just is not right right now. We'll explain why and what's holding him back as the season winds down on today's Locked On Cavs. You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Welcome in to Locked On Cavs. I'm Chris Manning. That's Evan Damrell. It's April. We're almost at the end of the regular season, and we're going to talk about Donovan Mitchell, who, uh, Evan, he's going through it right now, is what I would say. Yeah, I, I think that is a fair assessment. Mr. Mitchell is certainly going through it. Um, Mr. Mitchell, we should, should we bring back um, calling, like, I'll call you Mr. Damerel. I can't call Jake Mr. Stevens. That just feels too formal for a man well, I've only seen wearing black hoodies. Jake Marrier, my phone, so Mr. Marrier is fine. Um, no, I was just being sarcastic. If you want to be realistic, like, call them Mr. So-and-so because they're not your friends. So. Yeah, First name is a formality formal. sake. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. All right, so we're going to get to all things Donovan Mitchell today. What's up with him? His con- the contract extension comments from him and Cavs. Uh, are we are we still use the word owner? Owner Dan Gilbert, all of that. Some really discouraging numbers about his shooting at the rim. A lot to unpack with Mitchell, who, as we're recording this, the Cavs are a little bit away away from playing the Phoenix Suns. We'll get to the Tuesday Wednesday games on Thursday show late Thursday. Uh, Donovan's not playing in that game against sorry the Utah Jazz out the Phoenix Suns, but he is not playing, and uh, things are weird with him right now as he's been dealing with this knee issue. Before we dive into that, I uh, I think I speak for Evan as well on this. In front of the program, Martin Rickman. Today is his last day running Dime on Dime on Uprox at Uprox. Um, Dime, a long-standing, really cool basketball publication. I was lucky enough to write there for a time. Um, lots of great guys over there, and Martin is was part of some layoffs over in that media group, and. He's amazing. One of the nicest, most genuine people in an often kind of weird industry. I don't know what's next for him. He doesn't know what's next for him. Um, I just want to shout out my friend Martin, our friend Martin, for being a great guy. Uh, we had him on a break on the Donovan Mitchell trade. We should have him back on again soon. Just one of the realest ones out there. He did Absolutely say he's Martin. available for podcast requests, but yeah. But yeah, no, shout out to Rob Martin. Um, wonderful human being. Uh, one of my biggest supports when it came to getting right down to Euclid off the ground, constant source of knowledge and information and encouragement. I, I don't think I would be where I'm at without some of his early guidance, just in terms of just like, you know, finding my voice as someone who runs a publication and has to put on the boss hat and make those tough decisions sometimes. Yes, he's the best. All right, Donovan Mitchell. He's not playing Tuesday. Uh, I don't think anyone is happy in that locker room with how this team is playing right now. And Evan, he is not right right now. So the question is, where does this leave the Cleveland Cavaliers? I mean, that's kind of a broad question, but to like really tackle the, it at yeah. face value. Um, it's suboptimal because there's less than 10 games in the regular season. You don't really have practice opportunities at this juncture. On this current road trip, because of the women's Final Four, uh, the Cavs are on the road. That's the reason why, but the, 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 the women's Final Four is not the reason why they have two back-to-backs on this trip. But you'd assume, just like for a guy like Mitchell, who, as Bickerstaff has said, like needs those on-court reps just to find stability, normalcy within Cleveland's offensive flow, at least just have a rhythm heading into the playoffs or just, you know, shake off the proverbial rust so you can use that limited time before for the start of the play playoffs, like practice wise to kind of gear up and scheme up for an opponent. But yeah, his knee is just not cooperating with what everyone was hoping for. And that's just the unfortunate reality of the situation. Like I spoke with, um, we had Spencer on front of the program, Spencer German uh, yeah. about this when I was on the radio on Sunday on Easter Sunday. And I said, listen, PRP procedures are some of like the most intensive treatments you can get for like any type of injury, knee notwithstanding. And, there, it's still not a surefire guarantee that he's going to be healed in 100% even after he goes through the round of injections and just the, the platelet-rich uh, plasma just like cycled through his knee. So it's 
not foolproof, but yeah, it's clear he's not 100% physically and it is having an impact just with his play on the court and just I, I understand the natural frustration of him just not kind of having it click. Like he's only passed 20 points once in these seven games he's back since the All-Star break and I was against the Mavericks and they needed all 31 of those points he scored. So I, I it's all up in the air, but it's just really suboptimal timing because like the, the Cavs just don't really have much time left and neither does Mitchell just to kind of like figure out uh, how can we get you back to as close to 100% as possible? Where I think this ultimately ends up is just, it's a it's a very, like, n- injuries are never good, right? Injuries are never, like, a good thing. It is never a good time for you to have Donovan Mitchell, like, miss a bunch of time and not look right. The biggest problem now is that the playoffs are, like, in... Well, like the regular season ends in 12 days and we're recording this 11 by the time. The playoffs, you'll have six days or so after that before you actually play in the playoffs. But you don't have a lot of time here. You have like two weeks and change before the games like matter and your season is in do or die mode, right? Donovan, I, like no one, I don't even think Donovan Mitchell himself could tell you, yeah, I'm for sure going to feel great in two weeks if I take some time off or if I don't play any back-to-backs or if I just play like a couple games here or there. And even if you told me, Evan, that like that got his knee right, what does that mean for the rhythm of him? What does that mean for the rhythm of the team when they've had all these injuries and then like Isaac Okoro is out? They've had a bunch of other injuries on top of this. This team is not healthy, has not been healthy for a while. Mitchell's the biggest part of that, and he's dealing with the most significant injury the team is dealing with. I just, I feel like this is, for a season that had this really high peak and they overcame a ton of injury stuff in large part due to Mitchell, it is now like, it, it is off the rails a little bit. It is not so off the rails that it's like a car crash or a train wreck already, but it feels more on the table to end up there than I would have said like a month ago. And that all stems from the fact that the best player on this team, the setting force on this team, just is not correct. I somewhat agree with that. I, I, I'm of the mentality that, the, yes, the, that Mitchell's the Cavs' best player. They will go as far as he can carry them, or in this case, his knee can carry them. But also, it just doesn't help that the rest of this team isn't playing great basketball. And I do think a lot of that does fall on Darius Garland, just being so below average and just mediocre at the position since he's come back from the jaw injury. And, you know, if you look at the shot charts, and the dichotomy of their shots, like there is a lot of similarities in terms of like, how Mitchell and Garland are functioning with not 100% healthy bodies, but I'm kind of, I'm not getting impatient, I want to say, but I'm waiting for Garland to kind of like have it click again where he is comfortable and kind of flowing within the offense. Like the, the win over the Hornets was a good indication of that. I think the game against the Sixers was a good indication of that where um, I you just look at it like the, the Cavs were able to kind of play past Evan Mobley not scoring the first half, Donovan Mitchell shot not following. Like Garland was just more involved getting his teammates involved, but like Garland has just been so up and down and inconsistent that the Cavs just have no ball handler or initiator or creator, excuse me, that can really get the offense rolling. And it just kind of negates the fact that like George Niang is shooting the ball very well, Sam Merrill shooting the ball very well. Evan Mobley's been playing very good basketball over these last handful of games. Jared Allen has been very consistent, just giving you double doubles in terms of points and rebounds. But like the creation and the guard play has just been so overwhelmingly below average, whether it's because of injuries or anything else that like the Cavs are just in a really weird spot where their best player is not 100% and the team isn't 100% either. And it's just like the perfect mix of for chaos, I, I guess I want to say. Yeah, so I, I can't, even though you said you, you mostly agree, I think we just ended up in the same place. So what do you actually what do you disagree with? I just don't think it's a hundred percent on Mitchell. I do think it's twofold. Like the team hasn't been good either, even if he hasn't oh, been I don't, out there. I don't think my point is that it's not a hundred percent on Mitchell. Is that it stems from him? It is not all on him because none of these things are on one guy. But when your best player, who was playing at an All NBA level and was maybe going to get some MVP votes, suddenly just like doesn't have a working knee, none of like nothing like the other stuff that isn't working then is like a much bigger deal. Like you could overcome Evan Mobley being out. You could overcome Darius Garland having like kind of a crappy season because Donovan Mitchell was playing that well. And then that yeah. goes away. And it's like, you, the Cavs lost their safety blanket with Donovan Mitchell. Not hundred yeah. percent. That's yeah. 
yeah, that's an absolutely great way to put it. All right, after this, I'm going to hit you with some numbers on Donovan Mitchell, um, of how he's played of late, what it's looked like, all of the things that aren't particularly working with him right now. Because AKA, and if you've just been watching, you know he has not played that well. That's coming up after this. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning at championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, and eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, some numbers for Donovan Mitchell. Last four games, raw shooting numbers from the field. 5 of 16, 4 of 13, 4 of 13, and 3 of 12. It's pretty bad. Since the All-Star break, 16.9 points per game on 37.1% shooting while shooting 42.9% from three, five assists, 3.7 rebounds. Just at the rim, Donovan Mitchell at the rim since the All-Star break. In seven games, he's shooting 33% at the rim. Let's repeat that. 33% at the rim since the All-Star break for the year. Donovan Mitchell, 66% at the rim. He is literally half as efficient at the rim since the All-Star break. Obviously seven games, but Evan, that that to me says everything. Mitchell just, he can still make threes because like he can at least get the shots up and he's just good, but he can't get to the rim and when he gets there, there's nothing happening. Um, and he's he's not even blowing by guys, it looks like, in the same way on top of that. No, he's lacking the speed, the burst, the athleticism, just... The overall strength that we've kind of grown accustomed to it, it's very clear just from the eye test and also the the statistic numbers, like it's a harmony of those just metrics and just um, evaluations just really overlapping where like he is not 100% and it is very clear like he is trying to play through it. He has said publicly like he'll be fine. He just needs to get teams to play. He needs to just kind of keep figuring it out. He says he feels fine. Like, yeah, that's great. He feels fine. But like... Maybe it's the mental hurt road roadblocks, excuse me, or maybe it's the just getting back into in-game shape and also just finding your rhythm and just motion again because like that is a pretty serious procedure Donovan went under. So like he has to just kind of ramp himself back up to the floor. But again, like I, I tried to touch on this a little bit more in the first segment, but I'll reiterate, like no <clears throat> procedure is foolproof. Like PRP is kind of like I don't want to say a last resort because the last resort is just shutting it down and having surgery, but it is a very intensive procedure to deal with a lot of things going on your knee. In this case for Donovan, it, at least according to Brian Windhorst, it was like tendonitis or just like his knee tightening up and just flaring up at inopportune times from the wear and tear of carrying the calves all season long. Um, and probably just, you know, all of his teams up to this point in his NBA career. But it's uh, not just a foolproof recovery thing. And I think it's just very clear, like, yeah, he is just not 100% physically. and when we talked about um, him not playing against Utah a little bit, like it's the right call ultimately. Yeah. Does it stink? You're missing those opportunities to get him those reps. Yeah. But you'd rather have Donovan Mitchell feeling a hundred more, more closer to hundred percent physically heading into the postseason because out of all the guys on this Cavs roster, I just feel more comfortable saying like he can find a rhythm and flow. If his body's feeling right, a lot easier compared to other guys on this team, just because he's that dynamic as a scoring and offensive threat. I think it's just, to me, all that is true. I think the problem is just that I don't know if anyone can project like what like what this can be for for him at any point again this year. I, I just don't think anyone can reasonably say with any level of confidence from based on like what we know that he's like just gonna be fine or what this is gonna look like. And it's just 
the team is just it it's rudderless without the like you take away what Mitchell gives you and just it's also like frankly what Darius Garland doesn't give you as far as penetrating and getting in the lane and making shots at the rim all of that is I think adds to the issues here right it's like Donovan Mitchell when he's not super powered Donovan Mitchell as you said it's a safety blanket that is now taken away okay then he can't score at the rim. The offense doesn't function as much since the all-star break. Cleveland has the 22nd ranked offense in the league. Uh, it is three points, about three points worse per hundred possessions than league average. It is lumped with teams like the Joel and Beadless 76ers, the Spurs who are bad and don't have a point guard, the Raptors who are bad, the Jazz who are bad, the Magic who are like a really good net rating team sales are break, but it's because of their defense and have a pretty anemic offense, right? Like they're not, they're performing like a really bad team, have the record of a pretty bad team since sales break, a little under 500. So just like kind of like a blah team. And that starts with Mitchell and it extrapolates. And it's like, like Evan, unless he shows up game one of the playoffs and is like healed or like is 90%, it's just like, I, I don't think you can fix this like it's it's unfortunate to like say it to frame it this way but I think just based on what we've seen from Garland this year what we know everyone else kind of is and what Mitchell is and what he's not right now I don't think this can be fixed unless Mitchell is right and that's the scary part yeah and I think the 90% thing is interesting I think that yeah that that'd be ideal just considering there is so little time until that the playoffs best case begin. Scenario? That's is that best I would case? I mean best case scenario is a hundred, but like, you know, median, like, you know, hey, all right, like the Cavs, hopefully if they draw, let's say the Pacers, uh, in the first round, like the worst defense in basketball, you can really ease Donovan in and get his rust shaken off that way. But I I think like ninety is like, you know, optimistic. I would say realistically you're looking at like seventy five eighty, but like what percentage would you say he's at at now? I'd say he's at sixty five seventy and you're hoping you can squeeze out like another five, ten percent by managing his minutes, uh, shutting him down for certain games and just, you know, getting him some on court reps so he's not completely out of rhythm when he does get back to the court full time. I don't think no I don't think no burst can't score at the rim Donovan Mitchell is 65 I think it's like 50 percent it feels like 50 percent of Donovan Mitchell it, that's that's fair but if it, it so then if it's the gap is 50 percent to 90 percent I don't know how either side gets him 40 percent recovered <laughs> or like the closes that 40 percent gap in a realistic way without like completely jeopardizing something it scares me that he is he took time off the rest and I don't know how much good it actually did and we don't that's yeah like we don't know what happened behind the scenes either like he was cleared for on-court activity a while ago did he overdo it then or it's tricky just because also like practice and doing stuff with assistance or solo shooting work is a completely completely different beast compared to an actual live nba game where like you're going everyone else is going full bore and as you had said if you're at 50 or i'll say i'll say i'll lower my percentage to 60 65 um, guys don't care you're at that percentage they'll hit you at 100% force and that 35% difference does hurt quite a bit and I, I just don't know like where things maybe didn't work out quite the way the Cavs had hoped when he was like as you said shut down for such a long time resting and trying to recover after this procedure maybe it was playing too much against the Bulls or something like that who knows he in the month of March played four games in the games that he played, he played twenty, basically twenty eight minutes, twenty six minutes, thirty two minutes, and thirty one minutes. That's with some slight rounding, but it, it's about there. That's like a far cry from the thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight he's playing on, on a normal night. So the fact that he missed all those games, didn't play back to backs, and took like had time off, regardless of what happened behind the scenes, like. The data, the, the the fact we have is that he didn't play games and like clearly not like on a normal NBA season grind, and then still didn't look right. Scares like that 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 spooks me. That's fr- that frankly just spooks me for what he can give you this year. That really it just can't. It just I don't know how it can't. I I don't know how if you're JB Bickerstaff, if you're Kobe Altman, if you're Donovan Mitchell, like how that's not in the back of your head as you're processing this. And again, they know more than we do, but I don't know how that wouldn't be like percolating in the back of your head as you're trying to figure out the rest of the season. 
It's, yeah, I don't know. It's the truth serum comment you 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 like to use comes to my mind. Like I, in these instances, like if you had truth serum, like you could ideally say like, "Hey, how are you actually physically?" But you're never gonna get a straight answer because I don't think for a competitive well, we'll find- purpose you don't yeah. want to admit that, obviously. And well, also, like, just interviews like, will be like, "Ah, I shouldn't have played, but I want I owed it to the team." Like that, like he'll say that and be like, "Okay, like that explains a lot in retrospect, but we don't know that right now." Yeah, and it's just. It's it's a mess. Um, I, I think it's also just the fact that things did not go as uh, Mitchell or Cleveland's medical staff or the staff at the Cleveland Clinic that administered the PRP procedure as well had hoped. And I, I don't want to say this is the completely un- suboptimal outcome. Like the most suboptimal was like, oh, it didn't work at all. Like he has to have knee surgery and he's done for the rest of the year. But this is circling the drain, of course, where you're hoping like, okay, he could come back and like play at not a 50 to 60 to 65 percent level we're starting with a baseline of 70 75 percent and we can slowly close the gap by playing him limited minutes and maybe i don't know maybe it's an offensive thing too maybe the Cavs need to find ways to get him just cleaner shots just so he can find comfort and reps on the perimeter as he maybe starts to find the physical comfort of it like attacking the basket and things like that who knows but it's just it's been just really messy and Obviously, there's a lot of like medical reasons why we'll never get a fully transparent answer. But yeah, like you said, like at the end of the season, he could say like, "Listen, I wanted the, I didn't want to leave it all out on the line for my guys. I couldn't sit m- side by or sit idly by much longer." And like, yeah, you can respect that, but like also like, it's just it it stinks. Like it's just like you know, for a season that has been full of injuries, this is the worst one the Cavs have been dealt or have to have to do, deal with rather. Absolutely. All right. Last thing coming up after this. So Donovan Mitchell and Dan Gilbert both talked about Mitchell's extension. But did they actually did either of them actually say anything we didn't already know? We're gonna explain why they really just actually said a bunch of nothing after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire TV Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. To learn more, Visit Amazon.com backslash locked on fire TV. All right, last segment extension stuff. Uh, Dan Gilbert talks to Associated Press, says that he's confident in a Mitchell thing, says he thinks Mitchell likes it here, likes the group, all of that stuff. Donovan Mitchell then talks about it, is asked about it as he. Sh- you know, rightly so, is very not committal about it. Evan, did any of this surprise you? Did any of this teach you anything you didn't know about Donovan Mitchell possibly signing an extension this summer? So, as an aside or a background info, a uh, friend of the program and a few of the swords and right down to Euclid's Jackson Flickinger wanted to ask Donovan about these comments and I half-heartedly jokingly said, like, he's going to give you not an answer. He's going to tell you the same thing he said all season long. So to answer your question, no, I wasn't surprised because it has been the same answer that he has given since media day back in September, October. God, that's so long ago. I wasn't married before that happened. Um, But more or less, Donovan's like, I'm not going to sign an extension with the deadline looming. The only time I want to begin to entertain it is when this summer begins and like, you know, the Cavs can re up the conversations and he was transparent on the fact that like he wants to do best for him in his basketball future. And sure. Dan Gilbert made a pretty sound argument that, you know, if you're not a regular follower of this team, like makes sense, but 
Yeah, this is just a whole lot of nothing. Like, it's just, you know, I wasn't surprised at Donovan's response. I wasn't surprised with, you know, the owner, governor, whatever you want to call it, of the Cleveland Cavaliers say, like, this is a great situation for a free agent that we're trying to keep. Um, and now we just, you know, it's people can say whatever they want. It just really matters down to the brass tacks. Like, can the, are the Cavs going to offer them as, as much money as they can? Yeah, they should. But does Donovan want to sign? I don't know. That's entirely up to him. And, no one knows what Donovan Mitchell wants to do except Donovan Mitchell. And he is not going to tell anyone what he wants to do because it is going to be an overwhelming distraction if he said, like, nah, man, I want to dip, like, at this point in the season or at any point in the season. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell is a NBA superstar who has a lot of big money endorsements, who is represented by one of the biggest agencies and one of the biggest agents, Austin Brown, um, is agency CAA in the world in professional basketball. There is apps like he is a corporate entity to some degree. So he is going to give you corporate answers. That's what this was. Dan Gilbert is like for the times that he can be candid and in the past would like speak off the cuff and in, in, in a way he is a longtime businessman who is the head of like a very large mortgage lender um, and a corporate entity in himself. Like you're going to get comments that actually say nothing. Donovan one. Frankly, one of he, Donovan Mitchell's spe- best skills. Speak, speaking Evan, of, made, made a podcast um, talking about his rivalry with Suns owner Matashiba. So, uh, you mean like the? Oh, you mean like the Pablo Torre thing that came out on on Tuesday? Is what you're referring? Yeah, to? Um, yeah. Because there's like an interactive it's such webpage a, it's article such a about weird, it, and there's it's a just back- such a weird rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love rich guy stuff. It's very funny to me personally. Um, well, Big Bang Chris now is the agrees with it. Just can't no, but no, um. Donovan Mitchell's one of his best skills generally like if if I were like if you're like the Cavs PR team or like you're really happy with Donovan because he's really good at saying a lot of words without actually saying anything yeah like it's they, he's honestly great at it like I say that like with respect and he, also he can give you some quotes to tell me something. that work for like yeah well in this case social media engagement just because like what he has to say about it matters um sorry my knuckles split dry skin um but more so the fact that uh, a video of listeners, you just got yourself an interesting site, but audio, let's check us out on YouTube. Um, yeah, always just seems to say, like, Donovan's just a consummate pro. I know it's like a cliche, but like, he doesn't say anything like flashy that's going to like make headlines, but he'll say exactly what you need him to like for an answer, like to a question, but also like he fills in the cracks with like, a lot of just like positive reinforcement and stuff like that. Like, you know, just again, doesn't create controversy for the sake of creating controversy. Like he, he, he totally understands how to play the game. Where, wait, so where, where does this leave us? If you're the Cavs if you're him <laughs> and you're us, I think Evan, this leaves us in a place where we actually don't know um, anything. Well, we actually know, we know, we know nothing. Let's flip it. Um, what, do you think he does at this point? Like if you were just assessing like whether it's like you don't have to disclose conversations you've had, you don't have to disclose stuff maybe you've heard through the wire or whatever, but just based on just like your general perception, like you and I are around this team a lot more than folks who listen to the show, like no disrespect by saying that, but like it is a worthy question of like, what is he going to do? And like, I do think just considering like how, hot of a mess things are right now it is fair to speculate on it at times just because the season could be over sooner rather than later and then the donovan mitchell question just comes streaming into the rear view mirror again i think one of two i think there's two ways this goes okay i think he and his team surveys the market and sees that like there's just maybe not a situation that is going to willingly just like go get him this summer for whatever reason and he says, I'm going to take the the max you can give me, and I'll worry about this in a year and just get the money. I think that that is option one. The other one is that he just says, F, get me out of here. I think those are the two. I, I think even if he signs an extension this summer, fair or not, in a year, you will mm-hmm. still, if they, if they still just don't progress and it doesn't feel like Darius Garland moves in the right direction, if Evan Mobley doesn't move in the right direction, like whatever it is. If the trades they make this summer to reshape the roster, if they have to make a coaching change, if those things don't work in a year, you will have you will be kind of in a similar spot, but just 
with him on a longer contract than him just being the star guy who asked out on a big deal. Um, if I had to guess, as of right now, I kind of think just based on like the way the trade market's going to look and my suspicion that the only team he really feels like a real strongly, affinity. Let me say strongly for. Yeah, like there's only one other team, and we don't even need to say it. You know what it is. Like the the one that I think he would like to be like the homecoming for him to some degree, obviously. Ah, uh, okay. But I, I was thinking you're talking about the Heat, and I'm like, he could mean the Nets too, but you know, okay. Yeah, I just, can I, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something just very blunt. No one actually, not that many people care about the Brooklyn Nets. There's a, some, there are people that really care, but no one in New York um, City unless, cares about the Nets. Yeah, no one in New York City cares about the Nets. The Barclays Center is a wonderful arena for everything. Basketball, too, it's a nice venue, too. Um, yeah, it was just there. But, more stressingly, like if the Nets pay Mitchell the money he wants, Queens ain't that far away. He can ride out his season, be the number one player, and then go check yeah, but, the Mets right when the season here, happens. Okay, but no, let, let me let me. Here's the thing: Donovan Mitchell, I genuinely do believe, wants to like win and be on good basketball teams and like mm-hmm. accomplish things, right? There's I agree. That, about the, that's the way that's the, why the caveat. There, that's why I was like kind of tongue in cheek saying yeah. it. Like, if he wanted to see, like, he doesn't care, and he's like, you know what? Pay me top dollar. I get to live in New York, be around my family and home year round. I'm okay with like riding out like 35 to 41 wins a season for the rest of my career. Like, you know, some guys are driven like that, but Mitchell's not. Like, that was just me kind of being like tongue in cheek yeah. about it. Sure. I just do not believe that like the Brooklyn Nets actually offer you like a better basketball situation, even with like Mikhail, Bur- like they just, that is not a demonstrably better basketball situation or even a better one than the Cavs are offering you. So just take them. I, I generally think the way this could work is he just takes the money and like you see the roster reshuffled around him and you see where this is in like a year. And then, but is that, what does that mean for him? What does it mean? Is that actually like the right thing for the health of the Cavs? Like we could debate that in the summer, but I think that's a very realistic outcome is he just gets the the max gets the whatever extension he wants Mm -hmm. and just so he gets the money in his pocket and he worries about his future in six months or something or a year and that's not fun for anyone but i think it's possible evan what's your answer to your own question uh yeah kicking them kicking the can down the road certainly feels like a realistic path i i do wonder with like dan gilbert like so as an aside as chris and i talked about this before the show like this was him talking about detroit hosting the nfl draft and the fact that like dan gilbert does have a pretty substantial like investment in the city of detroit especially having them after or helping them excuse me after the recession and you know it was like the automobile industry crashed in uh, michigan so like that was the central focus and then the mitchell quote was kind of just like a sidebar conversation that became a story in itself anyways you do wonder like does dan approach the front office and say like listen we need to do whatever we can to keep this guy, make the moves that'll ha- make him happy because he was involved. Last, he is at Mitchell was involved last off season in like recruiting George Niang and Max Drews and giving his input on guys that like he would like to play with this season. So that, that could be a possibility, but I'm of the mentality where either he says like, Hey, I'm going to decline. I'm going to ride this out one more year. And maybe they sign an extension right away. He picks up his player option. The extension kicks in immediately after that. Or he's just like, I'm going to decline it and test free agency. Like, I think that's definitely a possibility. I'm, I'm too school of thoughts too. Or I don't think he signs, like he signs for max, but I don't think he signs for like the full max in terms of years. Like he gets top dollar, but he has a way to opt out earlier to one, test out this situation a little bit longer because he's only been here two years and he wants to, you know, see what the Cavs can do. Maybe with their, a gun to their head in terms of just like building a team around him exclusively. And he can kind of test the waters and feel that out a little bit more, but he does have another out just to go back into free agency, especially if, you know, this need doesn't become like a recurring issue for him and he's able to just like regain his form and just be a top 15, top 10, top 20, depending how you feel about him player on a consistent basis. I just don't think free agency matters anymore. Star I don't either. Agency. If a star wants out, they want out. Like, then they will make he's- a stink about it. But just based on how he acts it was pretty bad his last year in utah and he never like explicitly said he wanted out but like then after he was traded knew like yeah i was getting traded but that was also danny Ainge evaluating this team and saying like okay the vibes are that of a team that has reached its critical point we need to move on so who knows just based on like who donovan mitchell is he just doesn't seem like a guy who like 
is going to let a trade demand hang over the rest of this team, like publicly at least. No, but I, I would, I would just. The last thing I'll say is I just do think if he does sign something, it's going to be the most amount of years or the most amount of money. I just like there's no way that's not how this goes. That's just what happens now. Yeah, we'll see. And also the knee injury could play a part in it too. Like that could be like oh. Maybe I should sign for top dollar like immediately, and then like if it doesn't work out, demand a trade later. But like even if his knee isn't like as functional as it once was, or like this becomes a recurring issue, like to your point, yeah, he has maximum dollar guaranteed for however many years he's eligible to sign. I think it's like a four-year extension with Cleveland or five. I can't remember, but I think it's five. But regardless, it's like generational wealth money. Yeah, it's generational um, wealth money, and you know takes care of him from now when he is like in his late 20s uh to be specific he is in his age now he is 27 so like from 27 to like his early 30s like he could have generational wealth wrapped up and like that's what matters most so yeah that could be a possibility as well like the knee thing does play a factor in it too to me yeah he's about through 28 just go get the most amount of money you can why not we're gonna end there i'm chris manning that's him and damrell thanks to jake stevens as always, we'll be back uh, on Thursday. Another big picture Cavs topic. We're going to draft some role guys in the lead up to the playoffs. And then Thursday, we'll, we'll give you what we learned and what we didn't learn uh, from Cavs in Utah and Cavs in Phoenix. Until next time, I'm Chris at 7. Be well. Enjoy the basketball. Enjoy the basketball.